Hey everybody, it's Romania Black. Oh my gosh, we're on episodes 42 and 43 of The Untamed. Oh my gosh, we're, we're eight episodes left. What? <laughs> and so, man, oh my gosh, the last two episodes. Mwah, getting Yao's actor being so good. I say that about every actor. I feel like every actor in this series has had their moments, right? Like, Wanji is just, Yibo is just great as Wanji throughout. Zan is just great as Wuxian throughout. Um, Zhao, Zhao Zan, I think that's his name, is, uh, or Zhuzhan, I, or I'm trying to think, Zhao Jun, whoever plays Yang, he is great. And then the actor that plays Yao is amazing. Like, all these major actors have had their moments. And the actor that plays Mingzhu is great. So it's like every actor in the series has had their moments. And last set of episodes was definitely Yao and Mingzhu's episodes. Like, it was them getting to showcase their acting chops a full stage for us to like feast upon and fangirl with and it's just oh it's amazing and so now now we have Wuxian and them about to go into Yao's secret lair to find Mingzhu's head that won't be there we know it's not going to be there Yao's had time to hide it and Chin Su's going to commit suicide I, I it's always been debated like from the Donghua and the novel sections both everybody in the comments we've debated like did Yao encourage her to kill herself did she kill herself out of just grief I can see it either way I can see her being just so mortified that she takes her own life knowing everything that she's learned or I could see Yao being involved but but a lot of people comment that Yao really loved her and so he wouldn't kill her and so it's such a I, I kind of want to lean towards the fact that she took her own life because she just couldn't take it anymore but I don't know but there's that going on is baby the, the question is and I said this in the last reaction during all this mess that is about to happen, Baby Ling comes up and he stabs Wuxian. And in the novel in the Donghua, when Wuxian gets stabbed by Ling, we go into a flashback and we flash back and get more exposition. But we've already done that in this. So I'm like, okay, I guess we're just going to cut to Wanji taking him away and, and healing him and we're just going to go from there. So I don't know. I'm very curious how they're going to handle that. And we only have eight episodes left, and we've got all the rest of the story to happen. The burial mounds, the the temple, the conclusion. I'm like, I... And after, once we hit the burial mounds, um, we're kind of in uncharted waters. I'm just now getting there in the novel. So I'm hitting this around the same time, which is great. Because it's uncharted waters from here. The Donghua pretty much rushes through a lot of this. And so um, it's going to be interesting going to be interesting to see what happens. But yeah, the last two episodes were so good. And I'm like, I I am ready. I am ready to see what's going to happen with these. And just, I, I have things that I'm looking forward to from the Donghua to see them all come unraveled and see them all in their full untamed glory. So I hope you all are ready to fangirl because I have a feeling that's what I'm going to be doing this episode. That's why I've done this whole series, but it's been so worth it, right? Mm-hmm. So let's not waste any more time, shall we? I'm really freaking excited to get into this and see what's all going to happen. Wuxian's so confident. He's like, I've got Yao right where I want him. And I'm like, oh, honey, sweet summer child. Yao is not so simple. But we're going to start this here in three, two, one. Let's do this, y'all. My face hurts from smiling so much watching these episodes. Oh my gosh. I, well, okay. <laughs> I, it's funny. It's funny because episode 42, it just, it just cut right there. It just ended mid sentence again. It's like mid conversation. Episode 42 just ends. And then Episode 43, there were like five different places I thought the episode was going to end. I wasn't keeping track of time. So I was like, whenever whenever Jishin was done playing his song at and telling Wuxian about their mom, I was like, okay, well, the episode's going to be over. Whenever Wuxian did the toast to Wanji, I thought the episode was going to be over. Whenever they were like playing Wang Shin on top of a little apple, I'm like, well, the episode's going to be over. And then no, it kept going, which was great. And then we just end with Wuxian, our oblivious chaotic gremlin, Finally being like, who? Oh, man, man. Like, oh, God. Oh, my God, Wooshin. Oh, y'all. These episodes. 
Oh, oh, man. So we're building up to the burial mounds. God, we're getting close. We only have six episodes left. Six left, y'all. And we're building up. It's just ramping up. We're building up to the burial mounds. So we're going to get burial mounds next episode. Get Ning back in all this. Maybe Ling is going to be back in all this. Chang in all of them. And then I don't, I'm assuming... I'm assuming we're just going to get the barrel mounds next episode, right? Oh my gosh. W what? What? I, okay. So I, the, the episode 42, I didn't have a lot of notes on, but God, I was watching so intentionally because, oh my God, the acting in these episodes, it's just so intriguing. I, if you didn't know what to expect, then I imagine if you'd never watched the Don Juan from Odazushi and you just watched The Untamed without reading the novel, I imagine that these episodes were just like flooring because all the emotion, everything. I, I, whenever, whenever Sushi, so let's start with episode 42, first of all. Uh, whenever Sushi was like trying to figure out who Mojang Yu what what the deal was. I love that Yao stops him. It's like Yao's like, I want to reveal his identity. I don't want you to do it, Sushi. <laughs> Yao is such a catty winch in these episodes. Oh my gosh, that stare, that stare at Wushin as he's like walking through the chamber and Yao's like, you know exactly what you're doing. Like, I know what you know. I don't want you to figure out my secrets. Oh my gosh. And then there's a moment where, where Chin Su, the only thing about these two episodes that was a little bit odd was when Chin Su stabs herself, everybody's reaction was kind of like, oh, she's dead. Like, it, it's weird. That's the only part of the episodes, of yeah, either episodes that made me go, huh. We, we, their reaction was really understated. <laughs> and how they were just like, Oh, Chinsu just killed herself. Huh, how about that? Like, that that was their literal reactions. In the Dawn Wall, everybody freaks out. In the novel, everybody freaks out. But in this, everybody was like, Oh, Chinsu's dead. Okay, and Yao puts on the waterworks, right? But there's a moment during that scene where, where Yao is, like, crying inconsolably holding Chinsu, and Wanchi and Jishin just kind of look at each other like, Did we sign up for this? Like, they just had to give each other a look? But, okay... Knowing what I know from the Donghua, obviously, I've, I and we've seen this part in the novel, but I don't know the end. I haven't, I haven't read the ending of the novel where they confront each other. Yao and Hui Sing are just trying to out-act each other. Like, who can act better? And I don't know. Hui Sing's winning because Yao, bless his heart in these scenes, at this point, we, the audience, know, just from these episodes, from the last two episodes, we, the audience, know at this point that Yao is the villain. That is the one thing that I like better about the novel. The novel makes Yao's complicated character a little bit more ambiguous. Like, you know that Yao is probably behind it all, but you can't really, because it's the novel, you can't really get a read. Like, you, that's the one thing. Yao's actor in this, because it's like an act, a live action thing, his facial expressions give him away a lot. Like, you can kind of tell, you can tell instantly when Yao is faking it and when he's putting on the charm and when he's being genuine. And, or at least you think you can, right? And so that makes it a little bit easier to tell when Yao is acting in this. Whereas in the novel and the audio drama, it's a little bit more difficult because you don't get those facial expressions, right? You don't get a good read on him other than what he's saying and what the book gives us detail-wise. And the book is from Wuxian's perspective, so of course he wouldn't see, he wouldn't be like, Yao's expression suddenly changed because that would be too obvious, right? So... I think Hui Sang definitely wins the acting category because, God, knowing what we know, like that moment where Hui Sang's like, is that my brother? And it's like, you know it's your brother. And then when he faints, he's like, ah. Oh. And, he, and I, I knew a girl in college that she she fainted all the time for attention. And she'd be like, ah. Oh. And like instantly like fall back with a hand back. And you'd be like, did you faint? Because no, if you faint, you like fall to the ground. There's no there's no theatricalness about it. And that faint of Hui Sang's was very theatrical. I'm like, oh, honey. I'll give this man the Oscar now, right? But man, Hui Sing versus Yao in that scene inside the vault. I I am so excited for the Guanjun Temple. So excited. So excited. But yeah, it's all coming together. And that moment where Wuxian pulls out the sword and Yao's like, oh. <laughs> that moment, I would go, I'm going to go read. As soon as I'm done talking about this, I'm going to go back to episode 40. 42 and re-watch that moment because that was so hilarious where he was like, oh, Wuxian, like, like, look everyone, <laughs> it's Wei Ying. Like, it, that was just so damn good. And the sword sealing itself and Wuxian being like, and the whole time in the vault, Wuxian's like, well, crap. 
I've given myself away. And I will say this, Yao, Yao in The Untamed, they really make him a lot more villainous than in the novel and even in the Donghua. In the Donghua, it's everything is happening so quickly, but you get the gist of it. In the novel, Yao is, Yao is a good person. He just, you know, there's lots of layers there. Um, he, he, I think at heart, Yao is a good person. He just is so, there's a lot of obsession he has with just trying to impress his father and rise up the ranks and prove his worth. And then it just kind of consumes him, kind of like what it does with Yang. Except Yang was a bit more of a serial killer than, than Yao. But those words he says to Ling in this, that was like a Daddy Jin move. I was like, Yao, no. It was like Apple not falling far from the tree when he was like, he's like, are you going to just, it's, I, it must have been hard for you befriending someone that killed your father. And I'm like, Yao. Like that was a very Daddy Jin move. I was like, ooh. I was like, you, that was very following in your father's footsteps. And that's not in the novel. Or in the Donghua, so I was like, they just add that to add to, to Ling's, like, anguish and lamenting and angst as if he didn't need it already, as if he didn't have enough of an excuse. But yeah, and then, so Wanji and Wuxia, they hold hands going down the stairs practically. I know it's like this, but you, you might as well be holding the hands and jumping over everybody. And then Wuxian trying to save Wanji and being like, look, just deny it. Just say that you were tricked by me. It'll be okay. And Wanji's like, no, I've always believed in you. And it's like, ah, like the, the Wang Shin in this episode was just amazing. And okay, when I first read, when I first watched, when I first read the novel, at the time, this scene in the, it's so funny because it all makes much more sense now. In the novel, this scene happens before the flashback where it's explained. But in the novel, Baby Ling stabs Wuxian like pretty early on. And that leads us to the flashbacks. And I always wondered Wuxian's like, oh, he stabbed me in the same place his uncle did. And at the time I was like, when did Chang stab Wuxian? Was that when he was on the cliff hanging? It wasn't then. And it wasn't during the Nightless City. You find out in the novel, it was when him and Chang had the duel. When him and Chang had the duel for Wuxian defecting as the Yiling Patriarch and they had that fight, Ni Wuxian broke Chang's arm and, and Chang stabbed Wuxian. And the place he stabbed Wuxian is the exact same place that Ling stabs him. I was like, oh, it all makes sense. Now that I've seen that in the novel and now that I've seen that in The Untamed, it all makes sense. Because the Donghua doesn't have the fight with Wuxian and Chang. The Donghua doesn't have it. So when Ling stabs him, there's no reason for him to say that. So I remember when I first heard that in the novel, I was like, well, that doesn't make any sense. But, and some of you, I think, commented, you're like, oh, you'll find out what, the, what he's talking about. And now it all makes sense. That is the one benefit of The Untamed is with it being in a linear format, that kind of stuff all adds up a lot better than in the novel, there's a mystery. MXTX is writing in the novel, you a character will say something and it's in the context of what's happened in the past, but we, the audience, haven't seen that past yet. And then we backtrack and go back and see what they were talking about. And it's like, oh, I get it now. Yep, that makes sense. But then, oh my gosh, like Wuxian... When he's like, the line where he they go in the rain and everything, and, and Wuxian's like, I get it now. He's like, whenever, whenever everyone was flattering me and telling me how good I was doing using my tricks, you're the one that scolded me. And now that everyone wants me dead, you're the one that stands by my side. Like, it's true love, damn it. It's like, yes. Oh my gosh. I love it so much. So there is one thing here. In the novel and the Donghua, I'm pretty sure that all of his marks have gone away. I'm pretty sure all of his marks have gone away. I don't think we saw anything else like that. But in this, there's one mark left. And they they make it to where it's Yao. And they, they're like, there's one mark left and it's for Yao. But in the novel, all of his marks are gone. So that's a curious addition to this. I guess it's I guess it's trying to justify that they have to kill Yao for the curse to go away. They have to kill him. Otherwise, he's still going to be cursed. I guess that's their way of justifying it. I guess so. Um, Wuxian shipping Hui Sang and Yao, where he's like, it's funny. He's like, whoever is doing this is so mad, but they must have clearly cared about him. So maybe they're in love with him. I'm like, are you shipping Hui Sang and Yao, Wuxian? Is that is that your crack ship? Okay. Oh my gosh. And then I, I will say, uh, Zahn looks good as Wuxian in the red robes. It's probably my favorite look on him is the all red robes. Um, but then he's in like the little white undershirt and that's it. And then I love when, I love when Jishin comes in, they tie it all together and it actually works really well in this. I was wondering how they'd pull it off. It works really well. But I love when, 
I love when Jishin walks in and he just like looks down at Wushin in just his robes and he's like, hmm, my brother's not really, you know, thinking you look inappropriate, so funny that. <laughs> i just like, yes, I love it. I was waiting for him to quip up being like, you need some clothes? And it's like, nope. It's weird seeing them in pants. It's odd because we we're used to seeing them in robes so far. And then, so we have the we have the songs of turmoil. The the one thing that I wish they'd showed like a montage of, because in the novel and the Donghua, they like look through several books for hours on end. And I kept thinking they were going to do a montage in this where you'd see them looking throughout all the books, but but they don't. They don't. They don't look through the books, so it's interesting. They just find that one book, and there it is. But and then they stopped like such a cliffhanger. What the heck? And just stop right in the middle of explaining things. Like you do. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, though. Oh my gosh. So, we go back in this next episode, in episode 43, the idea of, um, I, I like that they tie it to that Mingzhu is smart, but Mingzhu is not a music lover. Mingzhu does not study music. So, he wouldn't be able to tell like the little nuances that Yao put into the song. And that kind of makes sense, right? I, I am not a singer. My brother and my father can sing great. My mother and I, we cannot sing. So we're like, I inherited my mother. My mother and I are like, we try. <laughs> we're just not very good singers. My brother and my father can sing really good. But um, I cannot sing. And so I don't know. My best friend knows like all the chords. They'll be like, oh, that's a G flat or something. And I'm like, Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I would be Mingzhu in this case. So I totally get what they're saying. Like Mingzhu doesn't know the difference between chords changing and things like that and musical arrangements being out of sync. That's like me. I wouldn't know the difference. I'd be like, okay, yeah, it sounds, I guess, a little bit different, but it kind of sounds the same. So it makes sense, right? And then, God, that whole scene of Jishin telling Wanji and Wushin, he's like, look, Wanji, you see Wushin a certain way and you trust him, but I trust Yao. And so, can we really question each other? And it's just basically saying, like, these are the two men that we love. We both love these men, so who's right and who's wrong? And it's like, Ugh. It's like, yeah, you're right. You're right there. Nobody's going to argue you with that. It's like, mm. it's so, it's so hard. It's just so hard. And I'm getting just, just the Zhishin angst coming when he has that whole monologue. I just he looked like a baby deer. He looked like a baby deer in that. It was like, oh, you just felt so bad for Jishin because he's like everything he's known is being called into question, and he's like, what's real? What do I do? I, do I, you know, I've trusted this person my whole life. Was it all a lie? Did I help them kill people? And it's like, Ooh. it's just I felt so bad for Jishin. And in the temple, in the I've only seen the temple scene in the Donghua, and it's been rushed. But it was still really emotional then, so I can't imagine what it's going to be like in this. Oh my gosh, it's going to be... I, that and the Golden Core reveal, I am so excited. I'm so excited for Huey Sang's reveal. I am so excited for Yao versus Huey Sang. I'm so excited for, for the Golden Core reveal. I, and then, oh god, Jishin's angst. I'm not ready for that, but... Oh, oh y'all. Mm -mm. And so then... I, I like I like that we go back to when so in this it's weird I haven't read it in the novel yet so I don't know the novel don't spoil me because I'm not at the novel part yet um, I'm not to the novel point yet and maybe I'm, I'm recording this before I read the chapters I'm on I'm gonna be on chapters 82 through 86 in the novel this week so I, I'm recording this before I read the chapters um, so maybe I'll we'll find out this week but in the Donghua in the Donghua Wuxian Wanji rescued him and Wanji fought off his clan members and that's why he got the 33 like lashes right and then he got drunk and he branded himself that's in the Dongwa what happens and in this we haven't got to the branding yet but in this he got 300 like wax with the paddle 300 and then it left all those marks those scars and then he had to stay in Gusu he stayed in the Black Hills imprisoned for three years to repent that explains when, when I was like, why didn't he go for three years to look for Wushin? You guys are like, you'll find out. And I'm like, ah, and that's so sad. I also love, I also love that, um, God, whenever it's Sushi, oh my God, whenever Sushi confronts Wanji at the burial mounds and he's like, he's like, step aside, we're going to invade the burial mounds. I love that Wush, that Wanji's like, you're not qualified to speak. I was like, ah, man, 
Wanji and Jishin just straight up don't like sushi. And it's it's so funny to me because they're so tolerant. Even people they don't like, they're very tolerant of. But for some reason, they're just not tolerant of sushi. And it's kind of hilarious. I'm kind of all about it. But yeah. But yeah, I he and then he, he has that little tome in front of him that that Chirin leaves for him saying like don't tolerate evil and things like that. But but Wanji never thought Wuxian was evil. So he just he thought he was mis, uh, misguided and misunderstood, but he didn't think he was evil. And so he just sits there and but he takes it. And God, when Chirin says like I'm so disappointed in you, it's like that's the ultimate diss from a parent, right? A parent can be mad at you, but the moment they say, I'm so disappointed, it's like, mm. oh my gosh. And so then, and so then Jishin takes Wuxian to the silence room and to the house where their mom was kept and explains just how, and it's so funny, we were talking about this in the novel, I think Molly was bringing it up, but we were talking about this in the comments about how Wanji is so much, back during the, during Wuxian's first life as the Yiling Patriarch and as Wuxian, Wanji was very much like his dad. He wanted to take Wuxian away and hide him away and lock him up like his father had done his mother and because he thought it was necessary. But several of you have noted that in the current timeline, it's like Wanji realizes that's wrong. He's like, he doesn't need to imprison Wuxian. If he loves him, he needs to accept him for he is and trust him and try to understand him and help him. And do. it sounds like Wanji's father didn't do the scolding and all that. He just wanted to hide them away because he was so in love. But Wanji's like, no, I want to talk to you and put you on equal terms with me, but I'm also not going to try to hide you away and force you to do something that you don't want to do. And it's like, uh, it just shows Wanji's growth and how he's not exactly like his dad. He is different. And Wuxian's obviously different than Wanji's mom, but baby Wanji! Oh my god, the kid actor playing baby Wanji, for the record, for the record, the child actor playing baby Wanji, just like the posture, the way he holds the book, the way he sits in the snow, like everything was exactly like Yibo in his role. I'm like, I just imagine they had this kid and they're like, I need you to act exactly like him in this scene. That kid was just like so perfect and he even looked kind of like Wanji and their mom was so pretty. Uh, and then you see Jishin, like, like little, like child's Jishin with Chirin. Oh my God. It was too much. It was too much. But I love that idea that Wanji represents this unconditional love. That when when, she, when Jishin is telling Wuxian about him going to his mother's to his mother's home to where she was being kept and staying there waiting for the door to open even after she was gone, I love that it's just that symbolism of, of unconditional love and like an undying love, like just against all odds loving someone. And in that moment, Wuxian learning just how much Wanji cares about him. It's like, and then Jishin plays the flute. And then these lawn boys, they fall hard and fast. And they, they are with one person for life. And unfortunately for Jishin, unfortunately for him, the person he likes is Yao. And it's like, ugh. And also, I'm sorry, but whenever they go back to the silence room and, and Wanji is there and he has his crown down. Like he looks all regal and stuff with the crown. But I think my favorite look of Wanji is when the hair is like all down. It's like in his face. He doesn't have the crown on. He just looks so youthful and he looks so like just person, like intimate and personal. That look, it looks like very private. That's, I think, I think Ebo is the most handsome in that, in that version. Like he just looks so handsome in that point. It's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But yeah, so, okay, we'll talk about the double flute. A lot of you said the double flute is a contested thing in the fandom because I have reached the point in the novel where Yanli has died and Wuxian has come back. And, you sh and Wuxian kind of confronts everything about this. And I am at that point in the novel. And I like the novel, and obviously it's censorship, right? Because several of you said that in, in a lot of Chinese television, you have to have your hero. Your hero can't be evil. They can't be a bad guy. They can't be morally gray. So this second flute is just an excuse to take some of the blame off Wuxian, being like, oh, well, Ning went crazy because of the second flute. The, the puppets at Never Night City, at the, at the Nightless City, went crazy because there was another flute. But in the novel, what I like about the novel is that it's like, no, Wuxian lost control. He was warned and he was like Icarus. He flew too close to the sun and he just, he lost control and couldn't control them. And that's what, and it just, 
he had, there were consequences. And so I love that in the novel, that, that MXTX doesn't shy away from making our hero, our protagonist, have flaws, and those flaws and errors have consequences. And so I like that. So here, it's a little bit of like throwing the blame off of Wuxian, which I get why they do it for censorship, but it is noticeable. I was like, ah, we're going to tie back and, and blame it all on that second flute, right? I, I said it was Yang at the time, but I think it's Yao. I think Yao's the one that played the flute. But God, I that whole monologue Wuxian has in the snow... Oh my gosh, that whole monologue where he just goes on and says, he's like, you know, he's like, back in the past, I would have cared. I would have wanted vengeance. I would have gone after everybody. I would have cared what everybody thought about me. And it would have bothered me that they think that I'm the one that did all of this. And back in the past, I would have wanted to take this whole second flute angle and run with it and just try to clear my name. But I love that he just, in the snow, standing out there, like bearing himself to the world, he's like, whatever screw it. I'm <laughs> like, ah, I love that part. Cause Wuxian's like, the past is in the past. I can't, I can't bring my sister back. I can't bring Ching back. I can't bring Ning back. So we've just got to do what we got to do and just say, screw it. Let's just move forward. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And that whole part of the monologue where he's like, everyone would just wanted a target. They could pin all of their hate on. And I became that. Right. He's like, but who's to say, He's like, we can't tell. We can't tell what, what, there's no, we can have all the what ifs we want, but in the end, who's to say, right? Oh my God, I love it so much. Mm -hmm. It's so good. That whole monologue in the snow, it's just so wonderful. And him, when he goes there and he's, and when he goes to the door frame and they're both like thinking to themselves and one she's like I just want Wushin to have a clear conscience and Wushin's like I just need to have a clear conscience and their their wavelengths are lining up and when he's like I want to toast you Wanji and he just he does this is a big gulp of the emperor smile just cascades down his chin oh I fangirled my like my heart I was just like yes please more of this in the snow the visuals it was amazing like having Wanji having Wushin burying himself like coming clean like just like washing away everything with the snow mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then he wanted to say thank you earlier and he's like it was too awkward to say out loud but then when he goes to Wanji he's like he says the words he says the words that Ching said he's like I'm sorry and thank you God, that scene. I'm going to go back and rewatch these episodes once I'm done recording this for the record because I love these episodes so much. They were so good. I'm going to go back and rewatch them because they're just so good. Like, yes, please. Yes, please. But yeah, so the Jade Token thing is interesting because in the novel, the Jade Token, it's, it signals an intruder because at this point, Jishin's trust has been broken. He's been given enough doubt that he doesn't trust Yao anymore, and so the Jade token doesn't work. And so that's when Yao comes and gives it back and does the whole interrogation that he does that we see in this episode. But they, they kind of skip that the Jade token doesn't work anymore and the intruder thing, I guess to make it more mysterious so that we, I guess so that we as the audience don't know where Jishin stands. Does Jishin still trust Yao or does he not? We, the audience, aren't supposed to know at this point, I guess. And that's why they, they skip that. They don't show us the intruder bit. But, mm-hmm. So I do always love, I, in all three versions, I love the scene where Yao is like, well, there's, there's, there's puppets at the burial mound and they think that Wush, that Wush and the Yiling Patriarch has created them all. And there's just like a subtle look on Jishin's face where he's like, Wushin's been here the whole time, so that's not true. And it's like the first little tick that you see Jishin being like, hmm, that seems sketch, right? And he can't overlook it anymore. And so, yeah, I just love the idea that it's interesting. So, Jishin is going to go. So, Yao wants him to come to Mingzhu's burial, which is how in the Dong Wall, that's where they all end up. They end up at the temple where Mingzhu is getting buried, and Yao basically takes Jishin there against his will. That's what happens in the Dong Wall. But everybody said the novel and the Untamed handle it differently. So, Jishin's going to go with Yao, and Wuxin and Wanji are going to go to the burial mounds and it's all gonna all gonna go downhill from there but that line that Jishin says when Jishin's like if things are wrong it turns out that Yao was behind this and that and lied to me this whole time that line I will make him pay I was like Whew. I was like Jishin getting a little scary there Jishin get a little little chill a little chill there mm -hmm. and then I they really didn't make a scene of it 
which I guess because of censorship, they didn't want to draw attention to it. But Wuxian riding on Little Apple while Wanji holds the reins, it's like reminiscent of that part in the novel where, where Wuxian imagines his family and this is how he sees him and Wanji. And he's like, we're just missing a kid, which we haven't got to Sishui yet. Like they, they kind of skipped over that part. And I was like, oh man, really? But it's fine. I, I get for censorship why they had to do that. Again, most trained rabbits in the world. That one rabbit started like start hopping a little bit, and then Wushin was, and he was like pecking him and stuff. I'm like, these rabbits, hardcore trained. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. But then, yeah. So we we went to the house, and for a second, I was like, are we gonna have them falling on top of each other in the straw? But I was like, wait, the censorship is not gonna allow for that. Of all things, they won't even let them hold hands, and aren't gonna let them fall on top of each each other in the straw. So instead they just hide behind it. But I like the change in the novel that it is. And maybe in the novel it was Mian Mian. I don't think it was though. But in this, it's Mian Mian. And she has a family now. She finds a husband and she has a little daughter of her own. And they're just, I think, was it Ching, Ching Yong? Or is that her courtesy name? Or is that her actual name? Instead of Mian Mian was a nickname. I can't recall. But I love that she has a family. Like a little girl, like she's happy and has a good life. And then Wanji and Wuxian show up and she's like, you guys, you're still here? And then Wuxian's like, wait, who is this? And then he remembers it's Mian Mian, our chaotic gremlin. Oh my God. But these episodes were wonderful. I loved these. I loved these episodes so much. These were great. And so we're getting the burial mounds next crazy talk. So yeah, it's all going to kind of all sync up around the same time, which is fun. I'm so excited by this because the Dong Wa, as y'all have said, it kind of just condensed a lot of things and left things out and altered things. So I'm interested to see how the Untamed is going to handle the final act of this and how the novel actually handles it in its entirety. So gosh, but these were great. I love these episodes so much. I can't wait to go back and rewatch them. I really hope y'all enjoyed this reaction and you guys enjoyed these episodes. I'm, I'm so excited. Um, I'm curious to know your thoughts down below, but oh my gosh, y'all, this was wonderful. So yeah, next week, episodes 44 and 45, we're down to the final six, the sweet six. Oh, buddy. But yeah, we'll see what happens. So in the meantime, I hope y'all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe, take care, and yeah, next week I will be back with episodes 44 and 45 of The Untamed. Bye.